Hey everyone, it's Trump Pimp, and I'm here to show you something that a lot of you have been waiting for. I said I would post a bow and arrow tutorial once I hit 100 subscribers, so here it is. First, I'm going to start out by listing all the materials you will uh, need or, you know, suggested materials as well. So what you will definitely need is some steel wire. Uh, somebody ripped this label off, so I can't really show you, but uh, that's it's fishing wire. Um, you can just look it up online. This is a 30-pound uh, uh It'll break uh, after 30 pounds. It's called 30 pound test. And it's got like, uh, I think seven, seven strands in it, but I'm not sure. It's nylon coated steel wire. Uh, fishing wire, beating wire might work, but it depends on the strength of the bow that you're making. So there's that. And what else you will need is a mini uh, drill, a hand drill. You can buy it at any hobby store with a one millimeter or less miniature drill bit. What else you will need is some electrical tape, whatever color you want. A uh, this is the basic tool that you'll need to uh, to make your bow. It's a miniature crafting knife. It has a uh, miniature saw blade on it that, that I showed in my arrow arrow tutorial. So there's that, and then the miniature saw blade will be used to cut cut this um, carbon fiber rod actually. I make my bows out of carbon fiber. It's uh, stronger than steel, lighter than aluminum. And uh, the width I use is 0 .080 inches, but you guys might want to use 0 .09 since you're beginners, and it's pretty narrow. So carbon fiber can be bought at any hobby, well, almost any hobby store. Uh, it's maybe $5 for a 40-inch rod, which isn't too bad, considering we'll use less than a foot for each bow. So carbon fiber, 0 .080 or 0 .090 inches. So this saw will be used to cut it, or if you have a Dremel, you can do the easy way and use the grinder to cut it. And the Dremel you can also use to drill a hole, drill the holes in the bow, which the mini uh, hand drill will be used for. So if you have a Dremel, it'll be a lot easier for you. If not, then you'll have to take the longer way. So what else you'll need is scissors to cut the electrical tape. Um, you don't need these, but it's preferred. It's better uh, if you have bead crimps, uh, pretty thick ones. You can order them online. I got them on Amazon. I got like 200 of them for about 750, and there's four different colors. But uh, there's like 100 in each package or something. Um, anyway, so the bead crimps, you you will need miniature uh, needle nose pliers to crimp the bead crimps, and super glue and something to cut the wire with. So these are just diagonal cutters used in uh, electrical work. And that's pretty much it. Other besides if you use a Dremel you'll need also a uh, small pin vise that fits tiny drill bits. So a pretty small pin vise. Can't really see it too well but uh, yeah just the smallest pin vise you can find for the Dremel kit and then a drill bit for the Dremel as well. first step is of course to cut the bow out of the carbon fiber rod that you have. You can either do this by using your miniature saw blade to just saw away at it or you can use the Dremel grinding blade which I prefer. So what you're going to want to do is make it at least 8 inches, I'd say 8 to 9 inches. Um, that way it'll just be longer. The, the more you bend it, the more stress it takes and carbon fiber does have uh, it's pretty brittle somewhat, so if you bend it too far, it can wear down and eventually snap. So you want it to be longer to keep a, a smaller angle of bending, smaller radius. So I'm going to cut mine about right there. Actually, I think I'll do about 8.5 inches because I want it to be compatible with my crossbow. This is the same bow that the crossbow uses, so you guys can also keep this, and whenever I make my crossbow tutorial, you can use it in that, and you won't have to make it again. So I'll cut this bow now. Alright, it's cut out now, and uh, let's see how long it is. 
should be about eight and a half inches. All right, perfect. Now I'll show you the next step. What you need to do now is get your miniature hand drill. Well, it's not really miniature, it's just a hand drill, but uh, should have a pretty sharp drill bit in it of one millimeter or less, and you're going to use it to start the hole on the end of your bow. So basically just put it on uh, the middle. You have to place it in the middle of the, of the shaft so that when you drill it, it won't be too uh, thin on either side of the hole and it won't break. So you want to do it I'd say about at least an eighth of an inch away from the end. I'd say about, I'd say, yeah, I'd say about an eighth of an inch from the end. Can be hard to start this hole out on the, on the carbon fiber. That's why a sharper uh, drill bit will help a lot. But just put it on the, on the uh, carbon fiber rod and just start sort of twisting a little bit, put a little bit of pressure on it until you start forming a hole. Make sure also when you're drilling a hole that you're going straight down and not at an angle. Alright, so I've got my small hole going. Um, I guess you can't really see it, but now once you, what you do once you have that small hole is if you have a Dremel you can take the easy way out and just switch your grinding bit with your one millimeter drill bit. So you take out the grinder, oops, switch the pin vise to the smaller one, put in your drill bit, and tighten it. If you don't have a Dremel, you're going to have to drill the hole, the entire hole with your hand drill, and that can take a pretty long time if your drill bit is, uh, if it's dull. And I found out that carbon fiber wears down your drill bits quite a bit. So once you finish the first hole, it might not have been too bad, it might take five minutes, but the second hole probably takes about twice as long because uh, carbon fiber just wears down the drill bit. So a good thing to do is use a Dremel, but it's not not completely necessary. Alright, so I'm just gonna sort of deepen the hole that I made a little bit so the Dremel doesn't slip. Make it a little bit easier. Okay, so now I'm going to drill the the hole that I started with the Dremel and make sure to keep it straight down as I said and right in the middle of the rod. My drill bit is pretty dull, so I'm going to have to switch it out with another one. It is a diamond tipped, uh, diamond grit tipped drill bit, but it also wears down just like any other. So I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I got a uh, sharper drill bit now, so I should be able to do it no problem. So I'll just drill straight through this rod. And don't put too much pressure on it, because if you do, it might crack the rod. All right, I made it through. Looks like it's pretty straight through. Now I need to widen the hole a little bit so that your wire can fit through it. All right, now you're going to want to start a new hole on the other side of the, uh, of the rod. And the most important thing is that you keep it facing the same exact direction as the first hole you made. So, you're just going to have to line it up as best as you can and start your new hole. Best way to do it is just to face the hole that you made up and just you'll know how to drill it from there. So it'll be facing up. Alright, I think that's good enough. So once you start your hole, just do another quick check to make sure that it's facing the same direction as the whole, first hole you made. And then you can drill it out with your Dremel. Or just keep on drilling if you don't have a Dremel. Alright, second hole is drilled. Now i got to make sure it's straight through. 
right through the middle. <sighs> Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to put in a thicker drill bit so that I can widen the hole. Uh, I didn't quite widen it, widen it enough earlier because when you get miniature drill bits, the differences in diameter are very, very small. So sometimes it just takes a little bit of trial and error. All right. And to widen it, you just put it through the hole and gently push. Don't put a lot of pressure on it because you can snap it. All right, so that hole is pretty straight through the middle. I need a freaking better camera to do this. Can't really see it, but uh, the other side I'm kind of worried about. It's kind of on the edge, and there's there's a visible bulge on the side of the rod. But if you made it this far, that is the hardest part of making the bow, so congratulations. Once you've finished drilling both of your holes, what you need to do is take your wire that you have. Uh, it should be at least 25 pound test and just take it and try to string it through the holes in the end of your your uh, carbon fiber rod and if it doesn't fit all the way through then you're gonna need to widen your hole by doing what I showed earlier just take the Dremel and just sort of push the drill bit in and out and uh, then it should be wide enough so it fit through that side and easily fits through this side a good way to test what the diameter should be on your mini drill bit is how thick the wire is that you order and then uh, just do that same width or a little bit less because when you drill something it becomes a little bit wider than the drill bit usually anyway so once you figured out that the string goes all the way through both sides what you need to do is take your or your wire that is and string it through one of the sides it doesn't doesn't matter which side just put it through and then take your bead crimps if you have them if you don't have them then you can just tie a knot if you don't have them, tie a knot at the end of your bow. I would probably tie at least two with the wire. Although a problem that can happen is the knot might get pulled back into the hole and end up splitting the carbon fiber rod. So that's why I prefer to use the bead crimps. So you take a bead crimp and, oops, I got like 20 of them there. Okay, so you take one, put it onto the wire. And then what you do is you take the wire and you loop it back around and put it back through the bead crimp. So it'll be like it'll be like that. It'll be a loop. Try to make the loop as small as possible and don't make the wire go past the bead crimp otherwise it'll be rubbing against your bow and it won't it just won't situate right. All right. So that's what it looks like. Now what you need to do is take your small needle nose pliers and just crimp it. You have to just uh, squeeze it in in the middle of the bead crimp. Just press down, squeeze with the pliers, and then it's crimped. Much easier than tying a knot and more reliable. And now you, if you haven't done so already, cut your wire so that you can tie the other one. Be sure to tie or cut some extra slack in case you mess up and need to cut it off and redo it. So I'll do it to about about right there. All right, let me zoom out so I can see a little more. All right. So now we have the wire and it's through one side. Now what you need to do is take the wire and put it through the other side. Make sure that it's entering the same side that uh, it's exiting on the other side. So don't don't twist the wire around like that because if you do that, then you're going to have to redo the whole thing. Redo the whole wire, you won't have to make a new bow, of course, but... And once you get it through there, just do the same process, but you need to make sure that it's taut. That it's tight and, you know, tight against the bow, because once you start using it, it's going to stretch out a little bit, inevitably, but it won't be too bad, depending on the wire you use. So, cut it uh, to about the same length you had on the other side, and get another bead crimp. Do the same process, and the only difference on this side is to just make sure that that wire stays tight the whole time. So what you should do is just keep pulling on this as you 
uh, make the loop and crimp it. And this one's a little bit too long. This side, the second one is harder because uh, you have to keep the loop small and you have to keep the wire tight. And those things are really hard to do at the same time. They can be. If your loop is pretty big and you want to make it smaller, you can just push the wire all the way through and then if you can, just snip off the rest of the wire. So I like to do that, just make the loop as small as possible. Alright, that's the smallest it's going to get. Now crimp it. And cut off the remaining wire. Can be hard to cut off the remaining wire. Sometimes that's why I don't recommend putting through, uh, putting the wire through, like all the way through the bead crimp, because you might not be able to cut it off very easily. But if you're good with this kind of stuff, then feel free. All right, good enough. And that's the finished bow. Actually, not quite finished yet. There's still a couple more steps, but that is the basic bow. So, got my little loops here. Just like that. If you can see the whole thing. There we go. All right, now what we need to do is you get your super glue and, of course, take the cap off. If there is a clog, which, of course, there is in mine, always, unclog it. I don't know where my unclogger thing is. I'll just use my drill bit and my Dremel. My trusty steed. All right, I think I cleared up the hole. Oh yeah. So now this is a very important step because it uh, helps keep the bow intact, keep it from shattering or cracking. What you need to do is take your super glue and, oops, I got some on me, uh-oh, no, uh-oh, dripping everywhere. Yeah, if you guys, if you're younger than, I'd say 13, be sure to get some parental supervision or have them do it for you because the super glue stuff can be nasty. You don't want to get your fingers stuck together or anything like that. So what you need to do is take the super glue and just fill the hole that you drilled with the super glue. It helps to, if you have a needle, or a sharp object, maybe a uh, those pins they put in the fold-up shirts. Um, just push, push like put it into the hole, and it'll help push in the super glue. So if I can find my needles, then I can do that. All right, I found them. Here are my needles, and any needle will do as long as it'll fit in the hole. Just push the super glue inside the hole. Be sure to put super glue on both sides so that it reaches all the way inside. You don't want it to not go all the way through and then break. And the reason this helps prevent it from cracking is because sometimes the uh, the wire moves around inside a lot inside the hole, and it just ends up breaking it. So I'm just making sure the super glue is in as much as possible. There we go. Now do the other side. Depending on the size of the hole, you might not be able to get the needle in, but just do your best. In this hole I was able to, in the other one I wasn't because I used a different size drill bit. Alright, and now just set that down to dry. Alright guys, this is the last and also the easiest step. We're almost there. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to take your electrical tape and your scissors. Oh, dang. They're magnetic, so I have stuff all over them. Anyway, take your electrical tape and scissors, and what you're going to do is peel about, I'd say, mm, about 12 inches off. If I can find the dang start of it. Oh, there, there we go. Hate that when you can't find the beginning of tape and you search for like five minutes. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. All right, so about 10 to 12 inches and just cut it off. And now you're going to cut the tape in half lengthwise. This is kind of a tricky part. Uh, it helps to attach it to something. And then hold the other end as you cut it. And I just got more super glue on me. Great. On my pink oh uh oh. On my pinky and my ring finger now and my thumb. You know, what? I'm just gonna throw this freaking piece of paper away that has super glue on it. That's a better idea. Always good to have scratch paper underneath your workplace. Oh not the carpet. Okay. Alright, so oops. Alright, so you're gonna cut it in half. And I have it just taped to my desk right now. Helps helps me cut it quite a lot. Make sure to keep it um, as halfway as possible. Try to make the two sides equal. Okay, so now I have two pretty long strips of half size electrical tape. Uh, just put one aside for now. And what you're going to do with these pieces of electrical tape is you're going to wrap your bow. What this does is it keeps it from splintering uh, because it is carbon fiber. It's pretty, I don't know, it's kind of brittle. Not the best material, but it's one of the strongest that I can find to make a uh, mini bow out of. So if you guys have ever wrapped uh, a drumstick or anything in tape, maybe hockey stick, it's kind of the same thing. You just, you start it and then you kind of angle it down and just start twirling. Keep it as tight on the rod as possible because you don't want air bubbles. You want it to be pretty flat, so keep the same angle when you twist it. And I just realized I should have done this before I strung it, before I put the wire on the bow. So I guess we'll just have to do it the long hard way. But uh, I'll tell you guys to fast forward in the video to this part so you can do this first. Because I should have done that. And, uh, yeah, I feel stupid now. But anyway, I w I'm going to finish this now and show you guys what it looks like in the end. All right, so I finally finished wrapping my bow with electrical tape. It took me probably about 10 minutes. It should only take about three because what happened was I, I accidentally strung it first, which means I kept having to pull the tape through the wire instead of just being able to twirl the rod as I held the tape. So for you guys, it'll be a lot easier, but this is what my end product looks like. It's pretty smooth for uh, doing it the hard way and just looks a lot cooler with the electrical tape on it and it also like I said it'll keep it from splintering and breaking off and causing your hands to get a little bit dirty or whatever so that's the bow um, I want to thank everyone for watching thanks for subscribing and finally hit that hundred subscribers I didn't think that would happen for a while but you guys made it happen and uh, stick around for the crossbow tutorial that'll be coming hopefully soon I also want to do my flaming and exploding bolts I know I said that I do I said I'd do that a while ago, but uh, I'm just having trouble finding something that's flammable enough to stay lit while it's being, you know, shot at at least 100 feet per second. It's just really hard to do, so. But I did fireproof my crossbow, and this is what it looks like. Covered in metal, even the track, actually. So it won't catch on fire when I shoot a bolt that's flaming, but I need something that's really flammable. So if you guys have any ideas or know of something really flammable that will stay lit, no matter what, uh, just please post in the comments. Uh, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the arrow part of my tutorial.